Prime the pill, Johnny Hawks, man. Hi everyone, my name is Brypone and I'm back with another episode of the Weekly Purple Team. This week, we're taking a look at Velociraptor, but we're going to take this from an evil perspective. Now, why are we doing this? Sophos published an article about Velociraptor being used by threat actors. Okay, cool. The problem with this is this is super weak. There's almost no indicators. There's a couple of Trojan protection things that they list in their EDR, right? There's two indicators. This is not good enough, right? We need to explore this from a purple team perspective so that you guys know how to protect yourselves if adversaries are using this. In particular, this is a forensic utility, right? So we're going to set it up as C2 and we're going to set it up to steal credentials. But first, let's take a look at Velociraptor and just some basics. So Velociraptor is a forensic utility management system. Basically, it is used for collecting evidence at large scale for threat hunting, right? Well, so if adversaries use this, what do they inherently get access to? Probably forensic memory, right? Well, what's in memory? Credentials, right? They also may get control and they may get other things as well. The Velociraptor is very powerful, and even in their own documentation, they state that, hey, this is a privileged application. So if you're seeing this installed anywhere in your organization and you're not expecting it, it could be a bad guy. Now let's go ahead and install Velociraptor on our Windows 10 host here. So we'll jump over to Win 10 host 2, and we'll turn, make sure Defender's up. It doesn't matter what your EDR is, it's probably going to get by it. The only thing we don't have set up here is OneDrive. So we can see our virus threat settings are all green, real-time protection, cloud-delivered protection. I never do automatic sample submission here in my lab. Tamper protection is on, controlled folder access, all of these things are on, right? So default EDR as it stands. Now, it doesn't matter what your EDR is in most cases here. Velociraptor, a trusted utility, is going to get by it. So let's go ahead, we'll install Velociraptor and just see what EDR does. It's probably going to do nothing. And notice this is an MSI file, right? To create the MSI file, the server creates the client configuration for you. And that's really it. It's now connected back to Velociraptor over TLS. Once this agent is installed, you have control over it. So we jump back over here to Velociraptor and we just take a look. We'll go search clients. And you can see right here, we have our host that we just connected, right? So we can see its IP address. We can see when it was last seen, uh, its agent ID, what the operating system host name is, what it thinks the operating system is. So that's just first, we get a bunch of information about this host, right? We really don't have to do a whole lot to get basic information. Now, where we get into power, is immediately we have shell. So, okay, I have C2, basically with that. So if an adversary is using this, they have C2. They can run PowerShell, they can run CMD, and they can run VQL, which is Velocidex query language, which is what Velociraptor uses to run all of its stuff. It's very powerful. So they can do quite a bit with this. But let's take CMD, and we're just going to run a simple command. So we'll run who am I right here from CMD. And we'll just tell it launch. And it's not a typical back and forth command line. Notice it gives you a time over here that it's completed. So now if you click on this, it will take you to the completion event. And then if you go to results, you can see the command results right here. And notice we're running a system. Not really unexpected because this is a trusted utility and it installs a service. So that trusted utility is typically going to run a system. Right, But this means you have privilege escalation just simply by installing this. Right, So if you're not watching for this happening in your environment, what can happen? Privesk, right there. Now the next question. Okay, so we've got C2, Velociraptor. Can we get credentials? Yes, we can get credentials. Now it's not the way you would think, right? You can try to dump process memory with Velociraptor. That's where you might get hit with EDR. 
But what if you just do the typical memory collection that a forensic utility does? Let's collect all of memory and send it back to Velociraptor. That we can do, and it will get by ADR. So we're in our client here. We're going to create a new collection. So you go plus here, and we're going to search for memory. And we just do Windows Memory Acquisition right here. Now notice what else you have here. You have Process Dump, right? I initially tried LSAS here. It wouldn't complete. EDR was kind of eating it, but it didn't. This Windows Memory Acquisition did complete. But there's a lot of things you can do here with this. Right, you can pull back event logs for awareness. You can do all sorts of stuff, right? You can do everything the forensic people do. You're just taking their tool and using it against them. So the next thing we want to do is down here, configure parameters, and you hit the wrench here. And this is your driver, winpmem.sys. This is a very, very common memory uh, utility driver, right? Now notice where it's installed from, though. Really? A driver installed from temp? Hopefully that pricks up the ears of most of you detection engineers out there. Nothing should ever be installed from C Windows temp, right? In this case, we're going to do that, but that's the default. That should look weird, right? Now you can override the name of the driver. It really wouldn't matter. And most adversaries probably wouldn't even bother with that because this is a trusted driver. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, it's just Velociraptor or WinPMEM for memory collection. No big deal. You can do compression here if you choose to. If you got a host with a ton of memory, I'd recommend you do that and you unzip it. But in this case, in my lab, we're not going to do that. Next thing you do is you specify resources. So this is where you have to tell the job what resources it needs. In this case, you want to extend your time because this is a memory dump. It can take a while, right? So we're going to go double our normal time here. Then you can set the idle time if you want. I wouldn't even bother with this. Uh, you can do your max logs. That's just the logs that it creates for this. But notice your max uploaded here. This depends on the memory of the host. So you might want to run sysinfo ahead of time and see how big this file is going to be. You are going to dump it to disk, but you're not going to dump it to disk in a, in a uh, suspicious location. It's going to dump it to the Velociraptor folder, which is kind of expected for the forensic utility. But in this case, we'll do like 32, just a huge number here. Then we're going to do skip queues and run urgently. That urgently run tells it not to wait on the timer, right? Just run this now. This is important. For review it, it gives you VQL, right? Max upload bytes, timeout, urgent, true. And then the artifact that it is pulling back. And now we're going to launch it. And what you'll see, you'll see it's waiting to run in progress. And then you'll start seeing this megabyte number count up, right? And who's running? It will be the creator on Velociraptor itself. Now you can run other jobs while this is going, but point being is you're going to get a full memory dump uploaded to you. Now we do need to extract the granules from that, and we'll do that here in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and pause here because this takes forever <laughs> as it's a memory dump and upload. It's a huge file. But let's go ahead. We'll pause right here, and we'll come right back. All right, we're back. So our Windows memory acquisition has now completed. We have a state of completed, as you can see right here, and we've got a giant file attached to this. If you click on this, it's going to show you the details of this. In particular, we're interested in uploaded files, and we have our physical memory.dd file. We'll need to be able to download that to do some post-processing. So let's do that. We're going to jump over to Windows host, Win 11 host 1 and we're going to do some post-processing. So first thing we have to do, we have to download our file. Simply clicking on that, we'll do the download. Now I'm not gonna download this because it's nine gigs and it might take a minute, but we're gonna be operating on physical memory.dd, the file that was uploaded from that host. What we're going to use is a utility called memprocfs. Memprocfs creates a file system out of a memory file. Right. So we're going to create a file system out of this, and it's going to do a mini dump for us for LSAS process. So we simply run memprocfs, we'll give it to dash F, and then we point it to our image. And our image, as we have here in our downloads, we'll just go right click and copy as path. Right there, physical memory.dd. Notice it creates a drive for us now. 
So what we'll do, we'll go into that M drive right here. And then we're going to look for name. And then we're simply looking for the name of the process, which is LSAS. Now you could dump any other process in here. You might be able to get some juicy information from Chrome or some of the other applications as this is a memory dump of that system. Right? You get all sorts of stuff. But what we're interested in is the mini dump of LSAS. This is a mini dump, write dump style mini dump, right? So we're just going to take this out. Now we're dealing with a much smaller file that is targeted for our credentials. Notice the file size on this guy. If we go to properties, now we're at 54 megabytes versus nine gigs. So I highly recommend you do this process. The next thing we're gonna do is we'll shut down memprocfs. We're now going to upload this to our Kali box because I have PyPyCats over there. You can use MimiCats for this as well. But I've just got PyPyCats available, so that's what I'm going to do. So we'll choose a file, choose mini dump dot dump right here. We're going to hit open and upload. Now we'll jump over to our Kali box right here. And we need to just make sure we have our file. And there's mini dump dot dump right there. And then we'll do PyPyCats LSA mini dump mini dump dot dump. And here we go. We'll see a lot of credentials here. If we go up to the top, we were interested in a domain admin, Bruce Banner. We should have our user Bruce Wayne, but we were interested in Bruce Banner. There's Bruce Banner, and there is Bruce Banner's NT hash right there. So we've now escalated to domain admin because the domain admin had logged into the system. We now, if we look through here, though, we'll see a lot of host hashes. You'll see. Uh, there's Bruce Wayne. There's another user or domain user hash. Now, volatility, if you use the volatility method, will only give you local users. This method will give you domain users. So interesting way of recovering domain admin hashes or domain user hashes. Okay, so that is the red. We have stolen credentials. We have created C2 using Velociraptor. So let's talk about the blue now. We're going to jump over to our elastic sim. And this is pretty simple to detect from a detection perspective. We're going to be looking for service installation. So first, we want to look for anything installed with a service name of Velociraptor. I'm pretty sure adversaries aren't going to change this. They're typically pretty lazy. Plus, this is a trusted process, right? trusted process. So we have some events here. If we choose this, now we pick one here. We can see our event code 7045. On our second one, we can see Velociraptor service as the service name. Now, if you want to make your rule a little better, you can look for a service name that has dash dash config and points to a YAML. That's not that common, right? Dash dash config and YAML is traditionally Velociraptor the way that it works. It embeds YAML files in the way that it's configured. So you can do it that way. You can look for Velociraptor service as the adversary won't probably rename that. But you can tell it's a Velociraptor if you're just looking for the service name. The next thing we want to look for is Velociraptor as the parent process. Why? That gives us what was run when it was a C2, right? When it was being used from our shell. If we do 4688 and process parent name Velociraptor.exe, we can see what was run. And notice the very first thing you see here is the who am I that I ran before. Right. So we got cmd.exe dash c who am I? You'll see PowerShell. If you run PowerShell, you can see all sorts of things that are launched by Velociraptor this way. Right. Notice here we have the MSI exec that was installed that way. Right. And then we have another version of where I ran who am I before. So this is a good way of detecting what is run when it's used as shell. Okay. Next one, we installed WinPmem to dump memory. Right. So to install, to look for when PMIM, we're going to look for 7045 again. You can look for 740, 7040, but 7045 is more detailed. So typically I'm going to go for 7045. If we choose this event right here, you can see our service name is when PMIM. We are installing from C Windows temp. Huh? If you ever see something installing from C Windows temp, bad, definitely go looking, right? But if you look at the event itself, 
You can see your service name, WinPMIM, your service file name, and it is a kernel mode driver. So kernel mode driver means that it must be signed, right? Drivers have to be signed. So that gives us a way to detect this if the adversaries rename it, okay? So how do we do that? You have to have sysmon, and you look for event code 6. That's a driver installation, and it's going to give you the signature. So if we look for the signature here, we'll go back to our one. Actually, it's three. Uh, when long event data signature is binalize LLC. That's the ones who the sign driver for WinPMIM is. That way, if they rename WinPMIM to something else, you're still going to catch it because guess what? It's made by binalize. All right. That's the blue. That's a lot better detection than what Sophos provided this from their article, right? That was pretty weak. If adversaries are using this, Sophos, you're listening, give us something more than two IOCs, right? All right. Thanks again for watching the Weekly Purple Team. Please like and subscribe. Uh, post the channel in places that, you know, I can't post it. Reddit R, NetSec, Reddit R, Cybersecurity. That's always helpful. But thanks for watching and hack the planet to defend better. Prime a pill, tell me how to